Okay, this is a, a really fun example. I think it's a fun example. Um, and a really good example of, of when we can use symmetry. So symmetry, very powerful tool, not exclusive to probability and statistics, um, but very useful here. Uh, can really simplify a difficult problem, make it much easier, much more manageable. And I think there's a real beauty to it, uh, which we'll see a real nice simplicity. So uh, we're going to be playing the, the game of Russian roulette. So hopefully you're familiar with, with Russian roulette. If not, we'll, we'll walk through how to play the game. Um, you play with a gun, right? So you have a gun. This is the cross section of the gun's barrel, right? So you know you have like a barrel of a gun, and it has, it has six chambers. So let's draw the chambers here. Six. Okay, I drew those a little bit off. I did that with drawing the chambers. Okay. And what happens? The way, the way the gun is fired is right. You like you know one of the chambers. Let's say like here's the the firing chamber, you, you fire, right, you fire this chamber, and then the, 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 the whole thing rotates, right, so it fires what's in this chamber, rotates, fires what's in this chamber, rotates, fires what's in this chamber, so it's kind of like it's rotating schematic. And the way you play is you randomly put a bullet in one of the chambers, you know, so you put a bullet in, you spin the gun, so you know, imagine the bullet randomly be here, maybe, let's say, and you play the game with one other person. So if you went first, then you would fire, you, you would get, in this configuration, you would get this chamber, nothing would happen, then you would rotate, they would fire this chamber, nothing would happen, you would fire this chamber, nothing would happen, and they would fire this chamber, and you know, they, they lose. <laughs> um, so, so that's the idea, it's like a you know, random chamber, two people kind of passing the gun back and forth, it, it's rotating. And the question we want to ask, the question we want to ask is, do you want to go first or second? And the reason I think this is a good question is because uh, you want, uh, you know, questions to be applicable to your life. Like a, a lot of the times, a lot of times in, in classes, the biggest worry is like, when am I ever going to use this? And right, like this, oh, point wrong, uh, this might be very useful, right? Like you might really want to know, should you go first or second? I, like I hope you're never in a situation where you have to know that, but this might be something that, that's useful. Um, so do we want to go first or second? Uh, pretty interesting question, right? And you don't have to take like, you know, a difficult course to try and solve this. You don't have to learn a lot about probability or like sort of advanced statistics. Um, you just kind of have to think about, you know, naive probability and, and I think the way that most people saw this is they say, okay, if I go first, let me think about like the probability that I lose if I go first, right? Right away, I take, I take the shot, right? I take the first shot. There's a one in six chance that I lose because, you know, there's one bullet and six chambers of one in six chance that I lose. So this is the probability I lose in the, on the first shot, but I can also lose in the third shot, right, or the fifth shot. So let me add the, the, the third shot. So if I, for me to lose on the third shot, right, there's going to be uh, four chambers left, and I want to get the bullet. So one, one, you know, one and four. But then you have to realize you also have to account for the probability that the uh, second person missed their shot, right? So there's, there were five chambers left. They had to miss it, you know. And you also have to count the probability that you missed your first shot, right? That you didn't get, you didn't lose in the first time because these are, you know, disjoint, this is a separate outcome. So the probability that you missed the first time, right? So you have to, okay, you missed the first time, they miss, and then you, and then you pull it. And then you need another term, and this other term is going to be even, even grosser, right? Like you miss, they miss, you miss, they miss, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, you could, you could write it out. You could do it if you want. You plug into calculator, you get the answer, and it's, and it's right. But it's, it's a little tedious, and it's not, it's not nice, and. Here we have six chambers, but if we had, you know, a thousand chambers, two thousand, a million chambers, this would be tougher to do. Or if we subvert the problem a little bit, as we'll do in a, another chapter, you'll, you'll see we kind of discuss this problem. This is just like kind of prefacing, talk about symmetry. If, you know, if you had uh, more chambers, if you owned, if you like took two shots and they took one shot, you know, if, if we have all these things, this, this isn't a very generalizable result. It's very like, you know, kind of quick and dirty, not, not super, you know, not super nice. So the way I want to think about solving this is I want to think about symmetry. I want to think about instead of you know taking these turns and like rotating this thing like a clock, I want to think about okay, um, I'm going to erase the bullet. You're shooting first. You have ownership. You're going to shoot this chamber. You're going to shoot this chamber. You're going to shoot this chamber. So let's let's draw this out. Let's draw out these chambers in terms of like slots, right? So okay, it's slot one, two, three, four, five, six. You own slot one, slot three, and slot five. Okay. You're going to you're going to shoot those. You know if if you make it up there. Or, or you know, they make it up there. You, you know, you, you, you own these slots. The probability that you lose, right, is the probability that the bullet lands up, lands, or ends up in one of these slots. 
So the bullets put randomly in these six slots. If it goes here, you don't lose, right? They, they lose. They, they have the second slot. But if it goes here, you own the fifth slot and you lose. So can we find the probability of the bullet landing in one of your slots? Well, sure we can, right? Like there's, there's six total spots and you own three of them. So the probability that you lose is just one. And of course, one of you has to lose and one of you has to win because the bullet's somewhere. So the probability that you win and they lose is also one half, right? And if you continue this calculation, you'd also get one half. So you know, this result is interesting, right? It, it, first of all, like, it means it doesn't matter if we go first or second. Probabilistically, it might matter psychologically, right? Like, you know, I personally probably actually don't know which one I would want to go and do. But, you know, I would know as a, as a statistician that it doesn't matter probabilistically. Although I'm sure in the heat of the moment I probably would, would pick one. Um, but it, it, it's probabilistically the same first or second. Um, and that makes sense, right? Like, if it wasn't, then you probably have people who always wanted to go first, you know, or always wanted to go second because the probability was in, was in their favor. But it's, it's even. Um, and notice that we couldn't use symmetry right away. Like, we couldn't say that first the, the two players are the same, so by symmetry it's one half, because they're slightly different in the setup of the problem, right? Like, going first, going second turned out not to make a difference, but it's not totally symmetric, right? Like, it, you know, could have. Um, what we did say was symmetric is when we drew it in this sort of new form. When we think about ownerships of, ownerships of, of slots, instead of, like, sort of rotating the clock. Owner, this, in this setup, this is a symmetric problem, right? Like, we... Of these three slots, by symmetry, it's equally likely to end up in any of the spots. We own three of them, so three over six. And this is a, unlike this clunky result, it's a very generalizable result, right? Like, we get a million of these slots, we could own three for every one slot the other person owns. And we have this very nice, simple, like, intuitive way to think about it, uh, instead of thinking about, like, all this kind of, like, nasty probability. Um, so, again, symmetry very powerful when you recognize when to use it, simplifies the problem, and hopefully, well, you know, not hopefully, but might help you out in a pinch.